In this video, we're going to go through how to configure and run a Wi-Fi auto test. I'll begin by tapping on the auto test application from the home screen. This displays the auto test profile group screen. When you open the auto test app for the first time, default auto test will be present. The test present will depend on the device you're using. In this case, I'm using an Etherscope NXG. So we see tests for wired, wireless, and air quality. Since this video is focused on the Wi-Fi auto test, I'll remove the air quality and wired profiles. This is accomplished by tapping on the settings icon and unchecking the auto test. Additional profiles may be added by tapping on the action button in the lower right corner and selecting the type of profile. I'll tap the back arrow at the bottom of the screen to go back to the auto test screen. To configure the Wi-Fi auto test, I'll tap on the test. Next, I'll tap on the settings icon in the upper right corner of the screen. I can give the Wi-Fi auto test a descriptive name. This is useful when creating Wi-Fi auto tests for multiple Wi-Fi networks. The Wi-Fi auto test profile will be saved to the list of available profiles using this name. In this case, I'll set it to Office. Next, I need to specify the Wi-Fi network to which I would like to connect. This is accomplished by tapping on Wi-Fi connection. Then I'll tap on SSID. A list of all the SSIDs seen by the test tool will be displayed. In this case, I'll select Netgear 77 5G. Then I'll tap OK. The authentication and encryption may be changed based on the requirements of the network to which I'm connecting. In this case, I'll use the default values. Now I'll tap on password to enter the password for this network. The advanced settings provide a means to specify a specific BSS ID to connect to, which band I'd like to use, warning and failure thresholds for the link, and an alternate ID. In this example, I'll leave these all to the default values. I'll tap the back arrow at the bottom of the screen to return to the Wi-Fi profile configuration screen. Channel test allows me to set the thresholds for both the 802.11 and non-802.11 utilization on the channel to which the test tool connects. This is a great way to determine if the channel is being overutilized or impacted by interference sources. IP configuration is used to specify whether the auto test is to use DHCP to obtain an IP address or whether a static IP address is to be used. When using static, you may specify the IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, primary DNS server, secondary DNS server. In this case, we'll use DHCP. Auto test will validate that DNS is working properly. In the DNS configuration screen, you may specify a custom DNS name to resolve or use the default provided by auto test. The gateway test will validate that the test tool is able to ping the default gateway. Here you may disable this test as well as set a timeout threshold. As part of validation, auto tests may be configured to test one or more test targets. These tests include ping, TCP connection, HTTP, and FTP tests. Tapping on test targets will bring up a list of previously configured test targets. New test targets may be added by tapping the action button in the bottom right corner of the screen. Once added, a test target may be used by multiple auto test profiles. In this case, I'll select the NetAlly HTTP test I've previously created. HTTP proxy is used if there's a proxy server present between the test tool and the internet. Now that I've completed the auto test profile configuration, I'll tap the back button at the bottom of the screen and run the auto test. I'll do this by tapping start at the top of the screen. Now that the auto test is completed, let's look at the results. In the test results, the top card will show us the number of tests run and whether there were any errors or warnings. The green chain indicates the test tool is connected to the network using this auto test profile. Using auto test to connect to the Wi-Fi network is necessary to run certain applications. The auto test shows us the channel we use to connect to the network and the BSS ID of the AP to which we connected. Here we are able to see the DHCP address we were given 
as well as the DNS server and default gateway. Scrolling down, we can see we are able to successfully run the HTTP test to the NetAlly website. If the test tool has been claimed to link live, these test results are automatically uploaded.